I, I really want to encourage people tonight, is really what I want to do. Um, I, I think that sometimes we get a little lost in, in the things that we hear and we think that they're lofty ideas when they're actual reality. You know what I mean? So many times I've, I've sat here and, and listened to Big Papa and Pastor Chris, and I'm thinking, oh, that's, that's good for you. You know, and I, and I kind of ride on the tail of the revelation. And I just want to encourage people tonight that it's, a, it's attainable. It is absolutely 100% attainable. It is, and it has to be because God's word is true. He's never lied. He's always been true. And I just want to read 1 Peter 2, 9 and 10. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, who once were not a people, but are now the people of God, who had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. And I encourage you that tonight. You have obtained mercy. You have obtained grace. You have obtained all of this knowledge. You've you've obtained freedom. I I was just, uh, Amy and I were talking earlier, um, and this this, this trail from Eve on Sunday and Katrina right before, and the freedom she was talking about, she's like, what's it worth? What's the freedom worth if it's not free? You know, there's, there's, there's a... There's a purchase price. There was something that was paid for. It was paid for for you. And the Father would have it no other way. Isn't that amazing? It's absolutely 100% amazing. When I think about the Father's love for me, what He's pulled me from, what He's seen me through, and I think, oh my God. And He would have it no other way but to see His Son die and be crucified so that I could obtain every spiritual blessing. Isn't it though? It, it's crazy. So I, I, I so encourage you tonight. I encourage you. I encourage you. I encourage you. You've obtained it. These aren't just words falling onto deaf ears. Please don't let it be words falling onto deaf ears. It's, it's, it's for everyone. So many times our pastor sits here and says, go read it for yourself. Please go read it for yourself and come back and talk to me. Please go read it for yourself and and, and hear the revelation that I have. What an unselfish heart we have in our pastor. Have you ever felt so loved? Tag, you're it. Tag, okay. It's really fun to do these things with Mark and I, and we get up here and and we're riding it together, so um, bear with us as we go back and forth. But we were just in prayer this week and, and in the Word, and you know what? We just couldn't stop. It was like just when we were just about to define what we were going to talk about, it was as if God was speaking a new thing and a new thing and a new thing. And tonight I want to say that God is speaking a new thing in your life and God has anointed you to hear his words. And tonight we're, we're coming and I really, something that was laid on my heart um, was about the seed. And so if you guys can turn to Genesis 1, that'd be great. Thank you, Father. And it says here, and God said, let the earth sprout vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees bearing fruit in which their seed is their seed, each according to its kind on the earth. 
and it was so. So right there in the beginning, we have God, and he has made a law. He's made a seed, and he's put everything in that seed that's needed for it to reproduce after itself. Right? We see it with the animals as it goes down, and he put the seed into every animal to reproduce after its own kind. He made a law. He said something in creation. He said everything is able to be remade inside the seed. And if we go over to, um, let's go to John. Where is my scripture verse? There it is, John 12. If we go over a scripture. And then here we have in the New Testament, in John 12, it says in verse 23. It's so small, I should have brought my bigger Bible. <laughs> and Jesus answered, answered, answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Truly, truly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth, and dies, it remains alone. There's that same seed principle again. Here it is. Jesus is saying something, but it's not about a plant that he's talking about this time. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. And I love this next part. It says, whoever loves his life loses it, and whoever hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Jesus was prophesying about himself right there, and he was saying it's about time for the Son of Man. He was saying himself to die because what the seed was he was saying I am the seed of new life I am I am the thing that must die so that I will not be alone and we see with this in in plants and everything so I looked up seed just um, in the dictionary and seed is a flowering plants unit of reproduction capable of developing into another such plant. Jesus was saying the son of man. So who is Jesus? He was 100% man, 100% God. In one body. He came in a in in a sinless body, walked the earth, being the son of God. So God produced the son. He produced the thing that could be crucified. The woman produced the body that was guilty, mm -hmm. right? He was hung on the cross, and he died that day. He was, he was killed because he didn't want to be alone. Because God said, it's not good for me to be alone. It's good. He said to man, actually, it's not good for man to be alone. Why did he say that? Because he knew that about himself. If we were created in God's image... So, you know, with Adam in the garden, you know, he had fellowship with God, but we know the story. He was cut off and separated. So this was God's plan. He put the seed principle into the earth already. It was already there, and he already wrote in the details of what it was that he saw coming in Christ. He was saying, I see that if I make and I bring forth a son and that son dies, then many will spring up like it. Many. Here we are. Look. Look at ours. How many thousands of years later, you know? It's 2017, so, you know, it's uh, probably, you know, what was it, 20-something, you know, way back then. I, had it, I have it all mapped out, but I'm not going to say it now because I don't remember <laughs> the exact dates. If you know it, you, you can get it. What was Jesus born, like, at 4 B.C., they kind of think, or, or they have all these theories about when it was because of how Jared, uh, Herod died and all these things. But um, thousands of years later, here we are now, yeah. still reproducing after the seed of Christ, still bearing what was in him. Here we are. So let's just turn over quickly um, to 1 Peter. 1 Peter 1. Let's go to 22. Having purified your souls by your obedience to the truth for a sincere brotherly love, love one another earnestly from a pure heart. Since you have been born again, not of a perishable seed, but of an imperishable 
imperishable through the living and abiding word of God. So there it is. So in the earth, there are seeds and they're perishable. They're dying. They're, they come to an end. But Christ was the seed that was imperishable. He was the eternal seed of salvation. And if we partake in the spirit of what he had, if we, if we receive the seed of life in us, then we too become eternal with him. So, tag? You want to tag? Sure, oh, yeah. Right. Tag, you're it. So there's a perfect example of what I was saying. The seed principle. Sometimes we think, I, I, I can't understand this. I don't know. It's not for me. I just need to be told. I need 1 Corinthians 2, 9. But as it was written, I has not seen nor ears heard nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who loved him. So that's from, what, Isaiah 51 or something. And some people stop there. I was actually in a service one time, and, and if you remember uh, Iris, um, I was in the back, and Amy and I were on our anniversary, and, and uh, this guy was up preaching, and, and he said that, and he stopped there. If you look at the next verse, what's the first word? I think it's but. Are you there? It's but. Yeah? Okay, good. So it's there. I'm not crazy. So it's but. And, and there was another minister up in, front, in the front row, too, and they're both yelling, but, but. And the guy stopped, and he's like, what? He goes, but. They're like, they're, the but. They're like, but. God has revealed them to us through his spirit, for the spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of, for what man knows the things of a man except for the spirit of the man which is in him. Even so, no one knows the things of God except for the spirit of God, which he's given to us. Which he's given to us. We have that. Okay? And I have, sometimes I have my own personal problems, and, you know, it's. I want to say it right, I'm, but it's like sometimes you're like reading something or you're singing something, you're like, oh, no, 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 no. I can't understand that. I want to understand that. And I know that there's, 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 there's times when you, you don't understand something, and that's fine. But the Spirit has been given to me to understand all things, yes, even the deep things of God. And it's not that we have to understand everything at one time. And that's where people get confused. They think, well, I got, I got to know this. I got to know this. It was like I tell everybody, I can go to my dad and I can ask him a question and he's going to answer it. He knows everything. I swear he knows everything. And it's like, dad, okay, and I'll call him. I got this electrical issue. I got this plumbing. I got this issue. I got this. Oh, yeah, just do that and that. And, and it works. But when it comes to Scripture sometimes, we think that we have to have everything all wrapped up in this nice little bundle delivered to us and we just like open it and... But, and it's not like that. God, because God wants you to search the deep things. Because he wants you to search the rich things. He says, search me. He, does he say taste and see? He says, taste and see that the Lord is good. So that means that you have to do something in order to taste and see. This isn't a one-way relationship. You know, it's like you, it's, we're getting, we're two months from... Christmas? Yeah, Everyone's like, oh man. <laughs> and, it's, and people think like, you know, oh God, I want a car and, and I want this and I want that. And God's just saying, just talk to me. Just talk to me. And have fellowship with me. I promise you won't, you, you, you won't go with nothing. You won't go with nothing. You, you, you'll have everything that you need in this life everything and I've learned that there's long ways around things and there's direct paths and I don't know about you PK but sometimes that direct path is sounds pretty nice to me it's like when you can step into those things and you're like Lord I do understand that Lord I do understand tithing I know that when I tithe and I give of my first fruits that I'm blessed and you can't help but bless me and then I know there's things that I, I go around, I'm like, I don't understand that yet, and I don't understand that yet, and here I am keeping my mouth closed, and I'm like, well, I'll, I'll ask Pastor Chris, or I'll ask Pastor Keith, and, and then you don't, and then all of a sudden you're, you're way out here and with nothing. 
We are surrounded. We are surrounded with inheritance. We are surrounded with inheritance. Isn't it amazing? It's like we're, we're, we're surrounded with every gift. If I could probably stand up and you guys, or you guys, one of you guys could stand up and just give you a gift, I don't have it. Bev's got flags. I ain't got flags. You know, and if you give me that flag, Bev, I'm probably going to hurt somebody. But I know she keeps that tight weave and she just gets going, you know. Ah! But for real, I'm telling you, there's gifts. I, 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 I was in Florida one time at, at Roy's, at Roy's uh, um, ah, thing, conference. conference, sorry, it was a worship conference, and someone actually got healed. They were talking about the flag lady. I said, I know her. I know her. You want to meet her? You want to tell her? They didn't. Sorry, Bev. <laughs> but but it, that's what I'm saying, though. I could, everyone could stand up and they could give a gift. Stevie, I can't play guitar like that. Katrina, I can't sing like that. Edgardo, I had him on a roof one time. I can't work like that. I mean, there's gifts inside of all of us. There's, and, and, and to me, that's, that's an inheritance. There's Wes. That's an inheritance. But, but when you think about the richness of the inheritance of the people that are actually around us, it's just so wonderful, isn't it? And I just think about that. Going back to what Aim was saying with the seed principle, this, these are things that we can understand. These are things that we can dig into. These are things that we need to dig into. These are things that we need to understand. Because we need to understand where we came from. And we need to understand, once we understand where we came from, we can understand our inheritance. Because sometimes it's a spiritual issue. And we're trying to search with our own minds. We're trying to see things. And it's like, let, let God just pull the veil back. Let him toss the veil back in the spirit and you'll see, bam. I can sit and worship and I can sit and, and, and see body parts that need to be healed. And that's an inheritance. Because God wants people healed. If I sit in my own mind and I sit in these things and, I, and I'm just like, ah, I'm, just, I'm just worshiping. It's my worship and it's my thing. It's no, it's, it's the gifts have been given to you to share with me. To share with your neighbor. To share with your friends. To share with your family. Why is it so many times that the Bible actually clams us up instead of opens us up? I was listening to that song the other day that we are the body. Why aren't his hands reaching? I'm like, I am reaching. Why aren't his hands healing? I am healing. And it was driving me crazy. Because I was like, no, I am. No, I am. I love casting crowns. They have a message that needs to get out there because there are some people that aren't doing that. But I am. And I know that I am. Because I see the fruit. And, but, but I was just thinking, like, but, but there's, there's so many gifts, and there's, and there's so many things out there for me, and, and there's so many things out there for AIM, and, and there's so many, and I think about my kids, and they're growing up, and, and what are their gifts? And, you know, it's like Zoe, she talks. <laughs> it's a gift. It's a pretty cool one. And, until it just keeps going. <laughs> but I think about my kids, and I think about the gifts in my kids, and so I just... I think it's pretty cool that there's an inheritance out there. There's absolutely inheritance. And when we can see it with one another, when we start tapping into the thing that God has, he has come, he has made his way into our heart. And I was talking to Katrina, I think, the other day, and I was saying so many songs are, because we were writing some songs, we were just chewing through the goodness of the scriptures, and I was like, you know, a lot of our view sometimes comes through music and songs, and a lot of what we believe comes through music. Some, some things that I grew up in believed that my dad never even taught on. I was like, how did I even believe that? I'm like, oh, it was the music, was saying something. And music is so powerful and it's so good. And I was like, you know, there's so many songs about me and God, me and God. And it's wonderful. And that's where we need to start and we need to see our face in him. And, but I was like, but what about God in us? 
and now I see you. And now I see my place. Now I see where I can stand among the body, mm-hmm. among the family. If it truly is a family, then I'm not singular anymore. I have died to myself, and I have joined a family. I love how Eve said it on Sunday. Uh, the Old Testament was about a God and his people. Mm-hmm. But Jesus was a revolutionary, and he, he came speaking a new thing, and he said, son and father. And they wanted to kill him for saying that. And yet we say it with just such freedom and ease. Mm. Uh, we've come into so much life. And, I'm, and, and I feel like we're taking a new step as the kingdom of God, as the church, to not only just see the fullness of my seat, but the fullness of your seat beside me. <gasps> my brothers and sisters are here. We're all here together, you know, making room for one another, opening doors for one another. There are many of you that are called. There are many of you that are anointed. There are many of you that are carrying ministries that I cannot carry. I'm not anointed to carry it, but you know what? I can open a door for you. I can be a faithful sister that can use my gift to open a door for you to use yours. And then together, yeah. we're, we're so much more powerful together. Like Mark was saying, the inheritance is in one another. It's in you and me. It's in us. Because who are we alone? Sad. (laughs) I don't want to be alone. I want to go to the party. I want to be with my friends. I want to be with my family. Why do we crave to be where there's many people? Do you ever think about that? I love to people watch. It's like my favorite thing in the world. Like Christmas time, do you ever go sit when you've been shopped out and you sit on the bench and you're just like, people watch. You're like, wow, look at God's creation. Look, I wonder what they're thinking about. Oh my goodness. Wow, look at that family. That's unique, you know? (laughs) And I often think, why is it that we love people or that we love to be in places with a lot of people? Why do we want to come and tell each other our story or our testimony? Why do we want to speak face to face? These are all things that are in God's heart. These are all things that are in him, that he has created us to be a part now with one another. Um, If you guys all want to turn to John 11... This is so powerful. And then I have a testimony to share with you. I lo- this is like one of my favorite scripture passages in the Bible. And, and I feel like every time I read it, I get something new. And God reveals something new to me. Um, so this is Lazarus when he was in the grave and he was already dead and they called for Jesus. And when he came, he already died. So the Jews were kind of mocking him like, ah, see, he didn't even go. His friend died, you know? And then Mary and Martha like, if you were here, if only you were here, he would have lived. You know? So in verse 20, so when Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him, but Mary remained seated in the house. And Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would have not have died. But even now I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. She was like comforting herself. I know. And Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. And Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. She was a good, faithful churchgoer. She knew the word. You know? She was, she was encouraging her heart. I know Jesus. I know. I go to church. You know? And Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life Jesus saying to you, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? Imagine your entire idea of religion, of what you went to church for, you know, sometime in the future, that thing that's gonna come, now Jesus is standing here before you. Do you believe? She said, yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God who is coming into the world. So I looked up resurrection. 
So the meaning of resurrection is the rising of the dead at the last judgment. The last judgment. So if you reread that, I am the resurrection and the life. The dead will rise. This is the last judgment in me. So I have a friend who's a Jew, straight up Jew. Like if she reads the New Testament, this is like not allowed. You don't talk about Jesus. You don't read the New Testament. And um, so for a couple of years now, we've been, our kids go to the same tennis group. And so we get to chat and um, it's so interesting to hear her point of view. Um, but me being who I am, I just, I don't know, just let it out there. <laughs> And I just love history, and I love to hear what people have to say. And so for years, we just talked about the word, and I, and I would talk to her about the Old Testament and the revelations that we've had about the Jewish culture and what it means. And sometimes in the word, we can read things and not understand like the fullness of what's being said because the Jews had a culture, and different things meant so many um, deep things. And so I remember the one day she came in, and she was basically telling me that she was secretly reading the New Testament. She didn't want anyone to know. And she was like, I'm just, I just, I'm just so baffled at this, like, this word blessing. Like, I don't understand this New, New Testament word and why they would say blessing. And, and, um, and the Jews would use a different terminology. Like, remember big Pastor Chris, he'd say a blessing is like, ugh. A hug. So they have, they actually speak um, in, what is it, Hebrew? And, and they, they read the entire Old Testament every year. You know, it's, it's like they have to do it. So when she came and started reading the New Testament, there were so many things she was so question, she questioned. She's like, why do they say that? Why do they do this? So we just had nice exchanges and talks and and I was like, wow, what is God doing in her life? She's like secretly reading the New Testament. <laughs> So, you know, just I just share my stories about how people are getting healed and our mission trips and how we're touching the world and, and all about our church and, and what the New Testament means to me and my favorite passages in the Old Testament, how they relate in the New and how Jesus has become my Lord and Savior and how he lives in my heart. And, you know, just, just be you, you know, don't worry. And uh, I, I just had to walk over that fear of offending someone. You know, it's like, that's me. It's who I am. And... Um, so, so by and by, um, she came in one day, and she was sitting there, and um, she was kind of sitting, sitting in front of Eve and I, and she, she just seemed so different, and, and she started telling us about how she was really sick, and how she almost died. She literally was about to die. She was having health issues, and um, she, she didn't really say at the time, this was about a year ago, she didn't really say at the time what was happening, and um, it, what happened to her spiritually, but she was just like trying to tell us something through her knowledge of religion, but she, she barely knew about Jesus or the New Testament, or she was slowly like walking through it, and so um, she had questions and this, and we would answer her, and, and I just, this last Tuesday, was sitting with her, and um, she was asking me, what's your favorite translations of the Bible? <laughs> and I'm like, oh, I, I really love the voice. That's like my, you know, favorite read, you know, and I was just telling her the different ones. I, I go to this one for like just the staple Bible version, or I go for this one for a nice fun read, or I go, I said, I think I have a Bible in a different part, every different part of my house in a different translation. And, um, and I was like, you know, it's amazing how uh, some translations cover up what's really being said in the parable. And I said, you must know this because you're a Jew, so you understand Jewish culture. She goes, That's, I was going to say that. She goes, in the New Testament, it's like between every single verse, I could write paragraphs of what it really meant. So I said, yeah, it's like the woman with the issue of blood when she is pushing through the crowd of men and touched Jesus, the hem of Jesus' garment. And I said, immediately, Jesus would have been defiled. Defiled. And, yeah, and the woman stone. And she goes, yeah. She goes, that's exactly it. People don't understand that. You could not touch a woman with blood. 
It was, it was forbidden and illegal. And I said, but yet, he still went and crossed the threshold of the man's door and then therefore defiling the whole man's house to heal his daughter and raise her from the dead. I said, they don't know that, that all the Jews were so angry. How can you defile yourself and then now defile another man's house? So the, the Pharisees and the evil people were raging against him, but yet he overcame cultural issues to still reach with the hand of God. And she's going, oh my gosh, that's exactly what I'm saying. And then I was telling her about, you know, the three times that Jesus said to Peter, do you love me? You know, and he said, feed my sheep. Peter, do you love me? Feed my sheep. Peter, do you love me? Feed my sheep. And I said, it's really, there's three levels of love. Agape, phileo, eros. Now correct me if I'm wrong. Okay, so he said, Jesus said to Peter, Peter, do you agape me? Agape, committed beyond all things. It's not an emotional love. This is a commitment love. And what did Peter say? Lord, you know I phileo you. I have a friendship love with you. <laughs> you know I phileo you. Feed my sheep. Peter, do you agape me? Are you committed? Lord, you know I have a friendship love with you. And then Peter, you know. Third time, Jesus said, Peter, do you phileo me? Lord, you know I phileo you. It has a whole new meaning. And so she's, she's so excited. She goes, that's what it is. She goes, when I read Jesus' prayer, she goes, I read it, and I just get goosebumps. And all of a sudden, she starts getting tears in her eyes. She goes, Amy, I met Jesus. And I was like, <laughs> She met Jesus. Awesome. Is that awesome or what? And I was like, it's so awesome. <laughs> she goes, I'm trying to tell my friends under the old, old law, Old Testament, it's just law. She goes, it was good for me. I was in law. I was good until I almost died. And then I met Jesus. She goes, I stepped out of law. And I stepped into Jesus. And I was like, I am the last judgment. My friend walked from judgment to life. Jesus is still saving Jews. <laughs> it's, it's really cool. <laughs> so that was my testimony I had to share with you. It was really cool. So cool. OK, so I don't have one like that. <laughs> but what I do have is a scripture to back that up. <clears throat> Serious. First Timothy four, fifteen. Oh, sorry, fourteen. Sorry, First Timothy four fourteen. I think. My Bible's wrinkled. <laughs> we have too much coffee in the morning together. That's so really that's true. Okay. Do not neglect the gift that is in you, which was given to you by prophecy with the laying out of hands of the eldership. Fifteen is what I was looking for, and sixteen. Meditate on these things. Give yourself entirely to them, that your progress may be evident to all. Take heed to yourself and to doctrine. Continue in them, for in doing this, you will save both yourself and those that hear you. She, she heard. Amy was given a gift. She was given something. And she stayed the course with it. She stayed the course, and she told her friend. The next year, she told her friend. And even Amy, they told their friend. They told their friend. They just kept, they kept talking and, and talking and talking. And then finally, through it all, a friend is saved. I mean, isn't it amazing? Stay steadfast in this. Stay steadfast to your gift. Stay steadfast to what you're doing. And it'll all work out in the end. All work out in the end. You know, I was, I was just thinking about staying the course, and I was reading in um, this little, whatever, I like to read blogs and different things, and so I was reading this one little testimony, and, and uh, so there was a flight from San Diego to Minneapolis, maybe some of you guys have heard this, but um, true story, two pilots, um, they're flying, and they miss Minneapolis 
by 150 miles. Their licenses were revoked, and they're no longer pilots. And this was, and I had to look this up. I was like, is this, is this real? It's on the, so I saw this on the news, and I'm like, yeah, they, they missed. So what happens is this co-pilot, or the pilot gets up, co-pilot takes over, he's got to use the bathroom. So he uses the bathroom, comes back, and if anything changes, the co-pilot will always tell the pilot what, what went on, or even say, nothing's changed. You know, we're carrying um, how many hundreds of people in the air? And so, he's, but he, he changed the frequency from, uh, he was supposed to go to the Denver frequency in the FAA, and he went to Winnipeg. So the pilot sits down, and he hears chatter on the radio. So he's like, oh, that's normal. So he's, nothing's changed. The co-pilot didn't say anything. And um, so then they open up their laptops, and they're just on course for Minneapolis, they think. And the pilot is showing the co-pilot how to use his vacation days in better, you know, so he can get more vacation using holidays and different things like this. And they overshoot Minneapolis 150 miles. I was like, it, it's, 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 it was such a routine flight. It really was. I mean, what do these guys do? We, we fly to Africa and we get there. You know, it's like we, we land, we get to the places we need to go. And, 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 and in my mind, I was like, it's such a routine thing. How do they do that? I mean, and it was over some vacation days, and somebody, and, and it wasn't even anything, it wasn't anything malice. They weren't trying to play a joke on anybody. They weren't, it was just, they didn't stay the course because they, 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 their focus went from what was important to what they thought was important. So there's Amy knowing what's important. She could have walked away from this friend. You guys could have walked away from this lady and said, oh, she's, She's a Jew, and she doesn't, she doesn't want to hear from me. And they said, no, we're, we're going to go in, we're going to talk. And they talk. They go in again, and they talk. And a friend is saved. Yeah, yeah. I, just, I just think that's really cool that... Yeah, and there was other, other people that we know around, and, and uh, the one time they're like, oh, God's working on her. And... Um, I was like, yeah, he is. I, we all noticed kind of this shift and this change, and, and none of, no, no one that I know of was pushing for it, and then it just reminded me of the scripture um, of all of us working together. It says, um, like, I, I, Apollos, watered, and you planted. Do you know that one? But God brings the harvest. What is that one? I'm quoting it wrong. So it was just reminding me of that, how we're all playing a part. And God was saying to me tonight, don't be afraid to play your part. Don't be afraid to step into what he's open for you. Don't be afraid to walk into your calling. And I always use uh, that scripture verse, I will give you, God said, I'll give you the words in the moment. Don't be afraid of what you'll say. Because in the moment, he'll give you the words. He'll give you the answer. Don't be afraid. You're ministers of peace and your ministers of life. And that's who we are, and it's alive in us. And it is God who brings the harvest. So we don't even have to worry about the harvest. All we have to do is our part, mm. the planting, the watering. It is God who, who <clears throat> brings the harvest in. And what she said was a huge key. It's, it's staying in peace. Yeah. The minute we stray from peace, we've lost it. Yeah. The minute we stray from the fruits of the Spirit, we've lost it. How many times I can think that I, I just, I, I, I went too far or, I, or I'm trying to make my point and I'm trying to make my point and then I lose my brother. And I'm trying to make my point and I'm trying to drive home something that I know that in my spirit saying, don't do this. But in my mind, I'm thinking, I'm going to do this. You know, and that's what you're thinking. Like, no, he needs to hear this. He need, and you're, and you're, you are fighting with yourself. It's like, there's, there's, a, there's a point when when you're, when you're confident, and then there's that point when it just kind of overflows, you know? Yeah. And that cup overflowing isn't for the other person. It's supposed to evaporate. We stay confident in what we are. You know, I'll never forget um, uh, Mr. Tim Balavia back there. We, we had the sanctuary with the youth group back, boy, that was back in the day, huh? I don't know, 10 years ago. <laughs> And, and, and Tim was giving a message up here, and he was talking about Jesus and how he was winding that whip around his hand. 
And I'll never forget Tim Bellavia walking across the floor, wrapping this. Well, he didn't have a, uh, I guess he had a metaphorical whip. But he was making it, and he was going. And I was thinking, of, and that hit me today because I was like, when you want, when you want to persevere like Jesus, when, when you want to act like him, when you want to know, like, the parables are there. The stories are there. And today it lived in my mind through Tim, and I was thinking, we can do this. We can, we can do it. We can, we can see these healings, and, and we can see these things come to fruition, and we can, and we can see this stuff happen. And I think it's, it's really high time. It's, it's, it's time to make these things start to come to life. And, and to I mean, all these, all these people in the church doing activities and VBS and, and the children's stuff and everything that you guys do. It, it's really time to see some miracles. It's time to see it. If it was in the Bible, it's in it for me. If it was then, it's now. Because God is a God of truth, He is a God of miracles. And He used mere men back then, and He'll use mere men now. He'll use imperfect things now. Hmm. You know, I was thinking um, Acts 20 was was going through my head this week and the beginning of it was like Luke's account of just travel of Paul and wanting to miss Asia but he's on this he's on this like he wants to make Pentecost at, at Jerusalem <clears throat> and he's telling um, what town was he in? There was a lot of them in there. There was tons of them. Was he at Ephesus? And, and he's telling the people that I'm, I'm leaving and you're not going to see me anymore. Mm-hmm. Sayonara. Sayonara. And the people wept and they kissed him. It was very sad. And yeah, we were crying. <laughs> and, and it was, it was it's, it's kind of interesting right now because, um, you know, Chris is gone, he's coming back. But he's going to be gone a lot. There's a, there's a calling on our pastor's life to take the word, to take it out. He, he'll tell you up here. He's been to Thailand. He's just got done with some stories from the testimonies and stuff. He, in, in Africa and wherever he goes. And these things need to happen. But Paul said, let me just say what, just say what he said. Yeah, read it. You're right. Whoops. Therefore, take heed to yourselves and all and to all the flock, among which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers, to shepherd the church of God, which he purchased with his own blood. For I know this, that after my departure, savage wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flock. Also, from among yourselves, men will rise up speaking perverse things to draw away the disciples after themselves. And I read that and I said, no, 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 not here. Not here. And I'm not saying it's happening now, but just hear what I am saying. It's not happening here. Because we stand up for the Word. There's so many people that we have that speak the Word. Eve on Sunday, that was an awesome word of love. It really was. It was amazing. Pastor Keith's coming this Sunday. He's going to bring his Word. We're bringing our Word. We're bringing the Word. We're, We're bringing encouragement. We're saying that you can do this. That you can do this, John. You can do this. 
Kyle, you can do this. Gary, you can do this. We can do this. Because God gave all of us the Spirit to oversee. So it's all of our jobs to oversee. He didn't just say, well, there's one pastor and he's going to oversee. That pastor has a vision and I follow that vision to the ends of the earth with him and I have. And I will continue to do so. But I know that he looks at me and he says, Mark, I trust you. Amy, I trust you. Eve, I trust you. PK, I trust you. Blake, I trust you. Katrina, I trust Eduardo, I trust you. Oversee the flock. As he's gone, as these things happen, as these conferences take place, and all over the world, this gospel's being preached. And it has to be. We're overseeing the flock. We're protecting the flock. And, and I just, I love that word on Sunday with love. It's all about love. It's all about love. Did you know it's the only commandment? It's what he said. Margie was reminding me of that, about that the other day. I don't know why. But <laughs> it's a good reminder. There's one. Love each other. And love love each Lord other. Love your God with all your heart. Yeah. Soul, mind, strength. Yep. Love your neighbor as yourself. That's what, I, that's what I tell my kids every day, all day long. Come on, love each other. No, no, we're not going to have a bad attitude. God gave you to one another to be best friends. You're going to overcome this. This toy doesn't matter. Yeah. I will throw it away. Like you said, I, I gave that to you, right? <laughs> I have thrown away. I said, I'm sweeping toys to the garbage can, and if they make it in, they're gone, you know? <laughs> I love getting rid of stuff. It's That's like true, too. Thing. She actually starts on one end of the house <laughs> with a broom. <laughs> oh, yeah. I've I never guess. seen this before in my life, ever. <laughs> Just sweep She it starts to the on one side can. of the, and she ends on the other, <laughs> and whatever's in that pile... <laughs> I mean, the kids will be screaming They'll bloody run. murder, but They'll it's just gone. Away. It's gone. It's crazy. It's, it's like the clean sweep that we've always dreamed of. It is. Yeah. It is. It's worth, it's worth the walk. It's worth the journey. It's worth the excitement. You know, it's worth everything that God has asked us to give. And he, mm. all he's asked us to give is our entire life. Yeah. It's worth it. The entire thing. That's it. I hate my life in this world, therefore I'm going to find eternal life with him. Those who love their life in this world can keep it. But we are wise to know that it's just not this natural life that we're fighting for. Mm -hmm. that we're winning, that we're loving. This is an eternal purpose with one another. This is just the beginning. This is just the start. This is just where we're like, hey, we're at the beginning lines. Come on, let's go. This is just where we're uncovering the revelation of what God put in our heart. You know, so many times my kids, you know, they're, they can be at each other. And I'm like, you're going to be together forever. I prophesy a bad over them. You're going to be together. You're going to be best friends. I prophesy that over you. You're going to be together. You're going to be best friends. You're going to work together. You're going to do it in love and kindness. And when it's hard, you're going to do the right thing because then you are going to win the Father's heart and his joy will be your strength because you overcame. Mm -hmm. The short, like Mark was talking about, the short path, that short line. It's easy to go your own way in the moment, and it's really hard when you're far away looking back at what you left. Sometimes in the moment, it's really hard emotionally to do the right thing. But the first step you make, it's joy. And it's easy. I, people always say, oh, it's hard. It's hard being a Christian. I'm like, that's not true. Sin is hard. <laughs> Finding your own way is really hard. This yeah. beautiful way that's been already carved out with a promised blessing yeah. on the other end of it. And every time I walk through those doors, the blessing explodes. Every single time there's a promise and it, it opens. Mm -hmm. Every single time that I have come in the diligence and the knowledge of the truth, God always meets me there. 
always, anytime I go my own way, I am sad. I am sad that I did and lonely. (laughs) But God's way leads us together. And so, I don't know, do you want to, I want to pray for people. Yeah, she really wants to pray for people. I really have it burning in my heart. But we're going to end on, on the scripture. Um, uh, it's something I mentioned one time during a tithe and offering, but this is stemming back from, from the beginning of this year when we had like that week of prayer where we all met like at six or whatever it was mm-hmm. in the prayer room. And uh, James 5. 16. Confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. And here's the, here's the part. The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. And, and that's how we beat the wolves. It's through our prayers. Because when we acknowledge that there's something going on, when we acknowledge that the devourer is trying to do something, and we're praying for it, we're praying for that person, we're meeting that thing head on in the spirit. And that's where we need to meet it. We're not meeting a person head to head. We're not meeting a person head to head. But hear me. This is, this is spiritual. This is, this is we're, we're going into the spirit and saying, Demon, you had your day. Here's the line. No more. So, I looked up a couple words. Fervent. Having or displaying a passionate intensity. And effective. Successful in producing a desired or an intended result. So when we go into prayer, we realize that we are righteous. That we stand with that authority. You have to stand with that authority. You have, that, that, that demon needs to know that you mean business. And that you're coming in with a desired result. And he also needs to know that you've been very successful at obtaining these results. We have to be successful. Let that desired intensity in your prayers be there. And realize that you're righteous. Realize it's you. Every, every person in this room, it's you. Fervent, effective prayer of a righteous man avails much. Are we looking for much or are we looking for little? I mean, it's up to you. It's up to me. It's up to AIM. I mean, we can sit there and go, oh, Lord, we'd like this. Or, Lord, we want to see this in our lives. And, and this has been the direction, but I don't know if it's for me. And, and then you just, or it's, no, this is for me. God, you said this in your word. I'm receiving this right now. And angels move. And make the angels move. Make a move. The Bible says they're there for me. I'm not there for them. They're there for you. You have them. Make a move. Make a move. Yeah. So, I do see, uh, I saw in the spirit earlier that there's some, there's some sort of arm problem or something. I'd like to pray for you. Um, if you need encouragement, we want to pray for you. If there's a blockade, if there's something that's going on inside of your heart and you're like, I just can't get past this, I just need some encouragement, we're here. Amy, I just, we just want to pray for you guys to see you guys be the overseers that you are. The overcomers that Jesus already purchased. It's already been purchased. It's already been done. Now it's our job to grab it. We want to help you.